Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. I'm Paul Tursellini, and in this episode, we'll be covering windows. Another term you will hear is fenestration, which represents the arrangement of the windows on the building. Often these words are used somewhat interchangeably. I'll introduce some important terms that are used to describe different properties of windows, and I'll talk about the energy impacts of the windows in a building. The purpose of a window is really to separate our comfortable environment inside the building from the weather outside while still allowing for light and views. But how do we characterize how well a window is serving its purpose? There are a few characteristics used in window labels that do just that. We've already talked about the U factor being the thermal transmittance, or 1 over R. And the lower the U factor, the less heat transfer occurs through the window. This equates to heat that is lost in the wintertime or gained in the summertime. However, windows are much more complex than just thinking about the U factor. They also transmit light. Every time you put a layer of something between you and the sun, you absorb some of the sun's energy, both in the visible spectrum as well as in the total electromagnetic spectrum. If you're not familiar with this term, the electromagnetic spectrum is the range of different types of radiation that get emitted by any object based on its temperature. A good example of this is the sun. Visible light is what humans can see, but this is just a small portion of the overall spectrum. The lower frequency, lower energy radiation includes the infrared, microwave, and radio waves. The higher frequency, higher energy radiation includes ultraviolet, X-ray, and gamma radiation. Certain portions of the spectrum can get absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere, but much of it makes it to the ground level and passes through windows. And we have to consider this when looking at window performance. One term that is used to characterize how much visible light passes through a surface is visible transmittance. This is defined as the percentage of visible light that enters the space. If you have a visible transmittance of 100%, that means 100% of the sun's visible energy or light passes through, or the window is completely transparent. If you have a visible transmittance of 0%, no light passes through and the object would be called opaque. Clear windows usually have about a 90% visible transmittance whereas tinted or reflective windows can have a visible transmittance of around 10%. Solar heat gain coefficient is another term that is closely related, except this incorporates the entire electromagnetic spectrum and not just the visible portion. It represents the amount of solar energy that enters through the window compared to the amount of solar energy that would have entered the space if there was nothing between you and the sun. For example, a window that has a solar heat gain coefficient of 0.25 only allows one quarter of the sun's heat to enter the space. Another term you will see often is air leakage or the rate of air movement through a window door or skylight in the presence of a specific pressure difference across it. All of these parameters, the U factor, the solar heat gain coefficient, the visible transmittance, and the air leakage are important characteristics of a window that impact its energy performance. They're important enough that the National Fenestration Rating Council developed a standardized label that requires manufacturers to include these numbers on their product. When we look at the U factor for windows, we are looking at heat transfer between our controlled inside environment and the outside. From previous episodes, we know that there are three methods of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. The way to reduce the U factor of a window is to tackle each of these methods of heat transfer, starting with conduction. Let's say we have a single pane of glass. The glass itself has very little resistance to heat flow, so the thermal transmittance or U factor is pretty high. Remember when we were talking about walls? 
on the exterior and interior of the wall, there's a convection layer, a region of air that does not move. From our episode on calculating our values for walls, this was the interior and exterior surface films. These layers have been quantified into surface film coefficients, or a numerical value to represent the resistance. Remember that air is a good insulator, so these surface films make, us, make up a substantial portion of the window's resistance to heat transfer. In addition, the glass temperature is between the inside and outside temperature. This means that there is radiative exchange between the window and the inside of the building. There is also a radiative exchange between the window and the exterior surroundings. Experimentally, the convection and the radiative components are well known. When I add a second piece of glass, we'll call this double glazing, a layer of air is sealed between two panes of glass. This acts as additional resistance. Now, what's interesting about this insulating space is that perhaps you might think that the further apart the pieces of glass get, it would become a better insulator. Well, it doesn't quite work that way. The more space there is, the more air can circulate. This will increase the heat transfer between the two layers by way of convection. Likewise, if I decrease the spacing between the layers of glass, I have less air, and I also lose the ability for the air to act as an insulator. Window manufacturers have fine-tuned this distance in designing windows because it's an easy way to decrease the U-factor without really impacting the cost of the window. In addition to tuning this gap to minimize convection, different gases can be used to fill this gap to further increase thermal resistance. For example, using noble gases, such as argon, instead of air, can minimize the heat transfer because they are less dense than air and have less molecules to actually move the heat from one piece of glass to the other. There are other products on the market. One is called aerogel that encapsulates tiny bits of air into a clear structure. What this does is it inhibits the convection process by putting the air into these separate pockets, increasing the thermal resistance between the pieces of glass. Another strategy is to put a very thin piece of glass in between the first two layers, so now I effectively have three pieces of glass and two air gaps. That is another way to increase the resistance or decrease the overall U-factor of the glass. Now we've discussed strategies for reducing conduction and convection, how about radiation? Recall that with radiative heat transfer, we not only have a temperature difference between the two panes of glass, we also have a temperature difference between our controlled interior environment and outside. Because of these temperature differences, we get a radiative heat exchange between those pieces of glass, as well as between the outside and the inside. In order to lower the heat transfer, we add a thin, nearly transparent coating to the surfaces of the glass called a low emissivity or low E coating. Typically, this coating is silver or tin oxide. When we think of low E coatings, we can think of it as reducing the radiative heat transfer. Often, because that coating is somewhat fragile, they'll put it on the inner layers of glass, that is, surface two or surface three, and sometimes both. The result is to lower the U-factor of the glass. If you put the coating on surface two, then as the sun hits that piece of glass, the radiation is stopped or reduced significantly at surface two, and that heat never enters the building. If you put that coating on surface three and the sun hits it, surface three will stop the radiation at that point, but it will heat up that inner piece of glass and heat will be transferred through the glass into the space. The low E coating on surface three will also prevent that radiation or that heat from leaving the building, especially at nighttime. What gets complicated is when I want the solar gain to help heat the house, especially with the south facing windows. I don't want to block the solar gain, so I want a window that has a really high solar heat gain coefficient, which typically is a window with the low E coating on surface three. 
If I take the exact same window and turn it around so that the coating is on surface two, the solar heat gain coefficient goes down dramatically, almost by half. The best energy savings windows will have low E coatings on surface two and three. It also will have a relatively low solar heat gain coefficient. Let's talk about design for a moment. If you want the free heat from the sun in the wintertime, you need a window with a high solar heat gain coefficient. But you also want a low U factor to not lose the heat that you have collected. To have a window that accepts the solar radiation and has an OK U factor, we select the south glass to meet this design criteria. It often means that there is only one low E coating that is on surface three. We will look at this calculation in a later episode and show the trade-offs between solar heat gain coefficient and U-factor. To recap, there is a lot more to windows than initially meets the eye. Luckily, the National Fenestration Rating Council has standardized a label that helps capture the important characteristics of a window and help you compare windows and find those best suited to your building's needs. One important thing to note, the U factor that is on this label already includes the surface film coefficients. This U factor is what you put directly into the heat transfer calculations. As always, please feel free to reach out to us with questions and thank you for watching.